So up until this point, we've been studying a lot of logic gates, a lot of Boolean logic, uh, manipulating things on the gate level. And from this point onward, we're actually going to stop talking about gates um, individually so much and talk more about components and how to create components out of logic gates. So we want to shift focus into um, you know, simplistic logical circuits into more useful, reusable logic components that can be used in a wide array of circuits. The first major component that I want to talk to you about is called a MUX, or a multiplexer. Um, here's the circuit diagram for a MUX. You can see this is what's called a uh, four-input MUX. So I have four inputs over here on the left side. right? Down here at the bottom, I have two what are called select inputs. And then over here on the right, I have the output. And the way that a multiplexer works, the way that a MUX works, is that exactly one of these inputs will proceed through to the output at any given point in time. The input that's chosen is dictated by these select inputs down here. So for example, if both of these select inputs are 0, 0, and 0, I would choose the first input and uh, let that input pass through to the output. These remaining three inputs would be blocked. So you can think of a multiplexer in that sense as a signal selector, a way to take multiple inputs in and select one of those signals for whatever purpose that I need. If, if the bits were 0 and 1, then I would select the second input here to pass through to the output. Right? You'll notice that for however many inputs I have, I need to have a certain number of select bits in order to choose across all of those different inputs. So in this particular example, I have two select inputs. The most I can represent with two bits of information is four inputs. If I were to have three bits of, it, of select inputs down here, I would be able to choose between eight different inputs on the left-hand side. So let's take a look next at how to create uh, one of these multiplexers using logic gates. Here is the truth table for a multiplexer, for the four input multiplexer that we saw. On the left-hand side, you can see the different select bits. On the right-hand side, you see the different input signals coming in from the left-hand side of the multiplexer. Over here, this signal could be true or false. We don't really care what it is. If it's true, I want to pass through true. If I0 is false, then I want to pass through false. We just want to pass through the signal exactly as it's coming into us. So in terms of creating this, then, we only need to consider the cases where I, the input signals are true. So the first term, then, looks something like this. S1 not, S0 not, and I0, where I0 is true. If I0 is false, then we don't really care about uh, what this term becomes, right? We just want the output to be false. So we can construct additional um, terms of this equation using those guidelines, right? I1 is true. That would give us the term S1 not, S0, and, S1, and I1. And then the following term would be S1, S0 not, and I2. And then finally, the last term would be S1, S0, and I3. And so we could then take this sum of products form equation and turn it into a logic equation that looks something like this. You can see that I can simplify things by only using two inverters and um, putting those inverters into multiple AND gates. You see that it does require some three input AND gates, which we haven't seen a lot of, but they're not too difficult to comprehend. And it also requires the use of a four input OR gate that you can see over here. If it helps make things simpler for you, you can actually decompose these AND gates and this OR gates into a series of two input AND gates and two input OR gates. Uh, it should get you the equivalent circuit. In the next video, I will introduce another uh, digital circuits uh, component called a decoder.